Hi everyone and welcome to PhotoWalk Pro Tutorials. My name is Jeff and in today's tutorial, and it's not really a tutorial, I just want to kind of show you a few things about working with uh, your 32-bit HDR files in Photoshop. Uh, I've covered some of the Photoshop uh, uh, routines as far as creating the HDR and um, you know then moving it over to uh, Photomatics to tone map it or to take it back down to a low dynamic uh, image in Photoshop, but I wanted to go ahead and show you um, just a couple of the things that we can do with the actual large or the high resolution image in Photoshop. So let me go ahead and uh, get this open in Photoshop, and I'm just opening up a uh, an image I shot uh, a little while ago in Georgetown of the uh, the CNO Canal, and here you can see the image is open. Now. Uh, the, as you probably know, when you open an, a HDR file in Photoshop, it doesn't look very good, and we've discussed this in the past that that's because you're displaying a 32-bit file in a what Photoshop likes to work with, which is a, an 8-bit uh, arena, and your monitor just won't show all that information either. Uh, also, the other reason that it looks this way is because HDR files um, are basically showing you a, uh, a linear uh, so you can't even see the histogram. It's a linear histogram. It basically it's going straight from uh, the black up to the white, and you're not getting that tone curve, that heel and toe, uh, or sometimes it's called a knee, um, and that's where you you start getting those tone curves in there, where you start getting the darks darker and the lights lighter, and your mid tones can be adjusted. But anyway, um, I've covered that in another one, and so what I want to show you is a couple of things you can actually do to your image and one of them is you can actually color balance in Photoshop before you actually move into another application because as you see I'm gonna move up here to uh, some of my menus uh, under the menu the mode menu um, you can see there's where we took it into the 8 or 16 bit to take it down into that low dynamic range but if you go to adjustments you'll notice that there are a few adjustments that we can make. We can actually do some levels, we can do some color adjustments, a little hue and saturation, um, channel mixer, haven't used that one, uh, actually photo filter and exposure. So there are a couple of things we can do in here. Uh, now under filter, not so much, but we do have blur, uh, noise, I don't know why you'd want to add noise, but you might want to. Uh, and then there's render, because you definitely want those difference clouds in there. Um, or not. Uh, but sharpen is actually one that we really want to look at. And you can sharpen your HDR file in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and look at doing a couple of different things here. First, let's go ahead and I'm going to pull up the, uh, the levels command. <clears throat> and here you can see, uh, now pay no attention to the histogram over here because uh, obviously the histogram can't display all the, it's just looking at what it sees on the screen. And there's more information in this file than what you're seeing on the screen so don't pay any attention to that but what you want to do is come over here and grab your white balance tool now instead of grabbing the gray clicker which is what you would normally use go ahead and grab that white clicking balance because the white at 255 you know that's there is no color that is that is a pure white balance and it's uh, kinda of what you want now I, I don't have a gray card in here I don't have a a, a ready-made neutral tone um, a lot of times I like to use like a road surface or something like that, but you know I do have these these rocks over here so I can actually let me zoom in a little bit and these are pretty neutral toned rocks so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, one of these stones right here which is a fairly neutral gray. Now as you can see I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now normally if you're working in an 8-bit image this would be a really bad thing to do because uh, you can see what it does. It basically adjusts everything so that that's your widest point in the image. But because you're working in a 32-bit environment and there's a lot more information you're seeing on the screen, you can actually go back now that you've corrected the color, you can go back and save all that information back for the uh, uh, exposure values. So now we're going to go up to Image and Adjustments and now we're going to go down to Exposure. And by going to Exposure we can come in here and now we can take this Exposure slider up top and we can actually slide it over to the left and look what happens. All those tones come right back. Now, there is no way you could do that with a standard 8-bit file. Once you hit that white balance, it would reset and all those tones would be gone. But because you're working in that HDR, that high definition, uh, or that high dynamic range, 
you don't lose those uh, those values. They're still there. Um, you can play with a little bit with the offset and the gamma correction. The offset's actually going to give you a little bit more contrast in there, but uh, I'm not going to play with that too much. Um, now, the other thing you can do in your file, some of the things you can't do, a lot of things, you know, your toolbar is over here. You can't use things like... Um, you know your your spot healing tools or anything like that. I would love to be able to use my spot healing tools because on this image right here, you can see I have a little ghosting. This bird it was three different exposures. The bird was flying through, so there's you know a decent one there. But I've got ghost images where the combining uh, sources just couldn't get rid of that bird. So I'll have to do that later in Photoshop because you can't clone or do any of those type items in an HDR file. It just uh, in fact if I try to do it like let's. Let's go down here and use the uh, the patch tool because I, I like the patch tool. It's a nice one. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and draw my selection around here and say, okay, there it is. I'm going to move it and it says, whoop, you can't do that. Uh, it only works in 8 or 16 bit per channel. So that's not going to work for us. But what will work, and let me go ahead and, and zoom out just a little bit here, get back to 100%. What will work for us is, as I said before, sharpening. Uh, so I'm going to go up here to my filter and select sharpen. And I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, Smart Sharpen, just because I can. And I've already got it set. Now, you, unlike in an 8 or 16-bit file where you have advanced options, in here you only get the basic. But that's okay. The basic will work for us right now. You can set it for more accurate. You can set it for uh, your Gaussian or your Motion Blur or your Lens Blur. I, I choose Lens Blur because I think that, that gives the best effect. Um, and you can choose the amount. Now, the amount depends upon how much noise you have in there. You still want to make sure you're keeping your noise under control. And especially when you take this into uh, a tone mapping environment, if, you've, if, you, if you don't have a lot of detail in those, those darker tones, that's just a, a, a reason to get a lot of uh, noise in there. So you might want to keep that, that sharpening down just a little bit. So I usually keep mine around 80, between 80 and 90, uh, and my radius set to 1 and that's it so not bad you can do a little sharpening you can do as I said you can do some color correction and then once you're done you're all set and you can take this into your photomatics and do some other processing um, I'm gonna skip that because I've already done the photo the photomatics processing in another tutorial but anyway I just wanted to go ahead and give you a quick view at a couple of things you can do to your HDR files while you're still in Photoshop. All right, so go ahead and give it a try, see what you think, uh, and stay tuned for another tutorial. I'm Jeff at PhotoWalkPro.com.